fight in the shade. All right, friends, welcome back to another episode of Tactical Enlightenment, and I have a question for you today. What would have happened if Genghis Khan and the Mongolian Empire didn't stop at the Danube River in Turkey? What happened if it made it all the way to Scotland and ended up confronting Robert the Bruce and his feared Shiltrun formation? Well, of course, the answer is that these kind of questions will never be answered. But as history buffs and enthusiasts, these are the questions that we love to make. Just like we're very curious what would have happened if Henry VIII had had a surviving son with Catherine of Aragon. Would the English church still be connected with the Catholic church today, or would they be Anglican? Well, these questions, of course, we can only speculate. But in this episode, we're also going to recreate. So first, a little bit about the Mongolians and Genghis Khan. Genghis Khan had a very difficult upbringing. At one point, he was actually abducted and turned into a slave. He made a daring escape and eventually beat back his rivals and started to form what we now know today as the Mongolian Empire. The expansion of the Mongolian Empire under Genghis Khan and his sons was, was truly astonishing as they consolidated tribes and expanded their borders from the eastern edges of China all the way to the Danube River in Turkey. So even people who don't know much about the Mongolian Empire probably know that the Mongolian Empire spread through the use of horse archers. These troops were highly mobile, they were extremely hardy and capable of living off the land, and of course they would encircle their enemy and shoot them full of arrows with extreme accuracy. The Mongolian Empire saw its greatest expanse under the sons of Genghis Khan, in particular under Monk Khan and Kublai Khan. Monk Khan was very briefly in charge but he undersaw the sack and destruction of Baghdad in which something like a million people were executed. After Monk Khan, Kublai Khan was the next greatest leader of the Mongols and very briefly they conquered most parts of China as well, including the Song Dynasty. But ultimately they were stopped like most empires just by sheer size and internal rebellion. They also had multiple failed attempts to conquer nearby territories, including Japan. Ultimately, the sons of Genghis Khan and the Mongolian Empire reached its peak in the late 
1200s, roughly about the same time as the Scottish were undergoing their breakaway from England in the Scottish War of Independence. Scotland had essentially been a vassal of England for hundreds of years, but in the late 1200s and early 1300s, they started to assert their own independence. Well, Edward Longshanks, the king of the England, was a ruthless king and decided he was going to put down any attempt by the Scots to do so. Well, Edward Longshanks died in the early 1300s, and his son, a weak king, took over, at which point Scottish again reasserted their independence. Ultimately, at the Battle of Bannockburn, the Scots won their independence. Now, this use of pikes spread across Europe, especially with the Spanish Tercio, which was a combination unit of pikes and harquebusers, essentially uh, early guns, which was highly effective, and they were one of the dominant units for at least 150 years. All right, I'm sure you folks want to battle with this video, so here we go. We're going to have a bit of an amalgamation of the two different stories I'm weaving together. Of course, one is the, uh, the theoretical match between Genghis Khan and Robert the Bruce with their Shiltron, and the other one is essentially uh, the request from some subscribers to see my elite veteran army of 300 troops take on as large an army as they can possibly manage. So in this episode, we're going to have that unit of 300 guys, 299 guys in this case, face off against a huge Kazate force. Uh, although I can just give you a spoiler, in real life, a Kazate force of horse archers would absolutely mangle a Shiltron, simply because they would surround them, shoot them full of arrows, and the pikes, of course, would be largely worthless since the cavalry wouldn't charge. In this battle, though, what we're going to do is effectively allow terrain to, f to factor into the equation. Now we've got a little bit of a drip here, Spartan drip, just because I know some people are sort of considering my little force here of 299 guys like the 300 Spartans. Persia and the Mongols aren't entirely uh, different in that they all, both had a lot of archers, horse archers. So I've got a few units with this little helm. I've only been able to find a few in my campaign, so we're not all wearing it. Uh, and again, it's a it's a custom picked army. Actually, here let me just add a guy, and now we're we're a full 300, right? We can sort of play like the Spartans here against this huge Kazate force. All right, we'll fight to our last drop of blood, just like the Spartans. I understand that I'm sort of making this a combination of of the Spartan battle against the Persians and the Scots against the the Genghis Khan Mongols. Uh, hopefully, it doesn't confuse people too badly. So 300 versus 2100. You know, we're outnumbered seven to one. Here we go. All right, so tactically what I'm hoping to do is combine the Shiltron with some of these rock uh, formations here. Of course, that's the strongest infantry of all time, right? Horse archers in real life would just surround and completely annihilate a bunch of guys holding pikes, holding sticks. The archers would just say, here, have some more sticks and shoot them, till arrows, shoot them with arrows till they were dead. What I'm going to do here with my units uh, strategically is get these guys within the rock area over there and try to form a Shiltron once we're in there, right? A three or four sided wave of heavy infantry and heavy cav and sort of protect our archers and force the enemy into essentially a peekaboo ridge strategy. You can see I've changed a few of my captains here. Uh, I'm also gonna expand my eighth core, just sort of make, my, make sure my units are ready before this titanic battle. Uh, normally she has a speed bonus uh, banner, but Dak Yao commanding my eighth core, now she has a, a, a negative uh, damage from ranged weapons. So we're gonna try to get our units here in a hurry. They're almost 500 units away. We should be able to do this, although maybe at the end, at the very end, while we're talking guys in, they'll be shooting us. But what I want to do is use these rock walls and basically hide behind the cover they, they offer uh, and protect our troops and force the enemy to get closer than, than you know, horse archers typically want to want to face, right? So look how beautiful this little valley is here. i got to plug this up with the third cav. We'll just stretch them out in a big shield wall. Uh, it's not a perfect defensive area. The archers will be able to come over the back too. But if I put archers on these back and front walls, anybody that peeks their head over these walls is going to get hammered. I can put my 6th and 8th core kind of right here in the middle, and they can act a little bit like an emergency responder, right? I'm a full-time firefighter. Uh, these two core are my elite units. Of course, all the troops here are elite. Uh, but these guys will be able to uh, be assigned to attack and kill anything that gets in here that's of substantial danger to our force. Obviously, we're going to be on hold fire. Uh, at this stage, we're just going to be waiting for the enemy to come to us. Yeah, that's a lot of horse archers. Come get it, boys. Horsemen! Move! 
Trying to stretch these guys across here. Oh wait, stay here, boys. I can do a little bit of skirmishing here early on. I gotta watch my health, but I can do some damage. Fuck you. That's a lot. gonna come first probably infantry there's a guy there's some guys sneaking in let's take a peek here yeah they're already coming here comes their infantry they got hev cav coming here so it's time to fire right it's time to open this death chamber up I want my sixth core right against the edge here whoops these guys got in a square somehow I must have fat fingered that let's spread those guys out kill the the stragglers that get through and we're just gonna hold the line here Oh, that's a fuck ton. Let's back these guys up now. They can't fight that many guys. Where's my first infantry? Get your asses over here, boys. Look at the arrows pounding these troops as they come over. Okay, so 6th, 8th, and 1st can now be put into action in this battle. There's so many infantry pouring in here. Fucking guys stabbing me and shit. They're walking into just an absolutely immolating fire from our archers. Not getting fucking caught up on their infantry. I can barely fucking move. Uh, get the fuck out of my way. We'll just have to kill them all. Stack their bodies up here like cordwood. There's thick over here too, but you see this cab line is keeping a lot of these guys away from our archers. Our archers in there are largely free. They stood those guys up. They're getting shot with arrows, and now we can clean up the stragglers. And their infantry is still fucking fighting. So we're outnumbered seven to one, right? So they're going to be huge waves of the enemy, and we have this this little band of tough units to fight them off with. This is going to be a bitch. That first wave though is repelled. Get the fuck out of here. Don't come back. Well, actually, we want them to come back. Okay, to be fair. Let's axe a few more guys, though. Okay, it seems to be they're either, they either pulled back or most of that first wave died. It seems like they died. That was a huge amount of troops. Uh, Long-time uh, viewers of the channel know that we do plenty of swearing, uh, but I'm, I'm, uh, I'm hugely against racism. I'm actually like a really nice guy, believe it or not. I'm one of those guys that helps old people at the store take boxes from the high shelf and stuff like that. I'm a full-time firefighter, uh, but I'm big into swearing when the time is appropriate, right? We're never going to be making attacks on people again. There won't be any racism. By the way, I'm just having my archers come over here while there's a little break in the action and gather up all these arrows. You can actually manually send your guys. Look at them. They're all down there just doing air squats, picking up, picking up the, the spent arrows from the enemy. In this battle, we're going to need all the ammunition we can get. Uh, but the point is, though, is we'll do a little bit of swearing. Uh, but again, it, it, most of it will be uh, sort of in the heat of battle. Obviously, we're fighting a fucking brutal uh, battle here. And I can't imagine that uh, there wasn't any swearing like at the, at the Battle of Bannockburn. I, I can almost assure you they were like, you bollocks, mother effers, or whatever, however Scottish people swear. It'd be kind of funny to hear, hear Scottish people swearing, actually. Of course, the English say stuff like, bloody hell. All right, I, enough of my bad impersonations. So now at this stage, all we're doing is waiting for the next offensive move by the enemy. Right there, the attacker, of course, because we're outnumbered seven to one, but we're not moving anywhere. Normally, I'm, I'm not a big fan. You know, viewers will, will tell you I'm not a big fan of static positions. In fact, I even have a war adage. Uh, you know, it's not like something 
from Sun Tzu or anything like that. It's just something that I've developed for Bannerlord that basically says that static troops are dead troops. Uh, now, shit, that's a fuck ton of arrows. They fucking killed my horse. You gotta stay below the ridge now for a while. At least until those horse archers are dwindled down. Protect my guys here. But the bottom line is if, if you're a good uh, tactician, you have a good strategy, uh, you can completely annihilate troops that are static. Now, this, ex this is kind of the exception here. We are in such a good defensible position, and of course we're actively managing our troops, that I think this has a shot of succeeding, even against this incredibly huge opponent. This is so far by far the largest challenge we've taken on with our 300 guys, uh, but there's special circumstances. Again, if we were in the open, I think this battle would be an absolute massacre as they pounded us with heavy cav, surrounded us with, with archers, uh, sent their infantry. They got probably twice as many infantry as our, all our troops put together. So, okay, these fucks want to charge? That's fine. We opened fire, and look at people just getting cut to pieces. Shot off their horse. I take care of the stragglers, right? If I need to, if there's a huge amount of them here, I can actually attack with the 6th and 8th Corps as well. So, like, we have room to spare on this attack. That, that was... Uh, you know, that was 40 guys. Okay, so it was a combination attack. Here come their infantry. Well, we charge. Right? We're not about to let them get down here to our archers. So in we go, foaming at the mouth, right? We're, we're out for fucking vengeance here. Our little band of Scots, our little band of Spartans is going to try, uh, try to fight off these fucking huge foes. All right. That wave seems to be mostly pushed back. Now, I don't want to go over the ridge. On the other side of that ridge, they will have their archers. So we want them to come to our ridge, right? This is a combination, you see me do this, called the Peekaboo Ridge. It's basically where the enemy is forced to fight on your terms. They're coming over that ridge, and these infantrymen, as soon as they, they swing their weapon once, their shield uh, drops, you know, falls back. That's how the game mechanics work, and they take 12 arrows to the face, right? Dead. They're, they're getting like one kill for every 20 guys right now. I see a little bit of red and then a huge amount of green each time. Which is necessary, right? We need to kill seven, eight, nine, ten guys for each one of ours. There's so many dead horses there, I couldn't even tell what the fuck was happening. They're still pouring over this ridge, but I have my first and sixth just sort of skirmishing in here, and the eighth core is standing back, just shooting arrows into them. At this stage, it's working exceedingly well. I mean, we're just stacking bodies up here, almost like the movie where they, the movie in 300, where they poured that giant wall of bodies on the enemy. Okay, so they've got archers here pounding our cab. Let's try to pull these guys down. We'll move our archers also, at least until they're out of harm's way here. Yeah, these guys are still getting shot. I wonder if I could distract him with cab and then pound him on the flank with archers. Let, let's give that a shot. They don't have infantry or cab support right now because we just killed uh, their, their forces now. So let's move these archers over here and advance cav in the face of these fucks. Right, what that does is it, is it basically, our guys will shoot through that. There's no, there's no friendly fire, fortunately. I can hold a shield too. And our archers back there are just firing through, killing anybody they can. In fact, let's move our cav and 8th core up here. Let's see if we can't, yeah, that was perfect. They already are out of here. They're getting shot, they're getting chased, they've had enough. What we can't have is the enemy raining darts in while we're being attacked by, by infantry and cab, right? We can't let the enemy make combined attacks. I gotta keep an eye on their, their horse archers back there. But when archers are running like this, right, you chase. Cut down as many guys as you can. I don't have very much time here, and I've gotta watch their horse archers. I think, in fact, I'm gonna, there's 103. I think we'll, we'll, we'll stay with the present threat. Let's not give up our strategy here. Let's use our little kill box here. In fact, the horse archers are coming through right now. So we're spread archers out and we're gonna attack these fucks rest, uh, relentlessly. They still have high level horse archers in here too. I see cons guards. Although I also see a lot of guys with poorly armored horses. That's a very good sign for us. That means we're through a lot of their elite horse archers. I still see some cons guards. It's not, we're not at the peasants yet. Die, motherfucker. That guy gave me a blow to the head there, I think. Can't really see. There's so many fucking weapons and, and darts flying through the air. Chase some of these fucks down. Uh, we just uh, massacred those guys now, too. Again, 500 dead horses here. Dead horses in a situation like this are actually good. Uh, 
you'll learn actually to leave them there if you can. I mean, they're going to get eventually shot by arrows or whatever, and they'll run off. Uh, but if you have a bunch of dead horses packed up here, what it eventually does is it gives you another barrier that the enemy has to come through, right? We don't we don't have the ability to pound spikes in the ground like they did at Azincourt. Uh, we don't have the ability to, to dig dig trenches and traps like they did at the Battle of Bannockburg. But what we can do is we can use dead horses to slow down the enemy a little bit here. It's just a little tip, but every bit helps. All right, another infantry wave coming. They're pushing cab through on this flank. I'm spreading my units out now in the back of this because I want them to be able to pound these infantry as hard as they can before they come over this ridge, or as they come over this ridge, rather. See, I've got my first infantry division basically heading up to confront them, and if they come over this ridge, they're going to face fucking absolute hell. My archers are not out of ammo yet, right? But we've been conserving our ammo when we could. Chase these fucks down. <laughs> Guy got shot in the back. Now I got two shields. I don't know if I need two shields. Well, I have my primary weapon still. I'm gonna back these guys up now, and what we'll do is we'll make a combined attack on these guys once they're down in the valley. I'm now actually kiting these guys, right? So they're chasing us down, they're being pounded by ammunition, and now we charge. We confront them, right? It's a concentrated attack. It's still gonna be hard to fight through this many troops, but they're weakened. A lot of them are dead already, and we're just gonna try to pull our way through here. At this stage, of course, our troops are much stronger than the enemy. Not only are they injured, but we have elite troops still. In fact, of course, all our, our whole army is either very high level or elite. Uh, and these are middle tier troops for the enemy. These are tier three, tier four infantry. You know, the Variags and stuff like that. And the enemy almost looks like they, they wanna just cry uncle. Uh, you can almost see a tear in some of these guys' eyes. Need to work on my jujitsu. My kicks are off. Well, so far, so good. Maybe tonight the enemy will dine in hell. Maybe we'll dine on on their uh, their food in the castle nearby after we sack it tonight. Pick up some ammunition here. Long battle like this. I'm down to half health. Uh, people wonder how sometimes how I stay alive in battles like this. Well, part of the reason is I have 330 athletics. So you have more hit points to, to start. I'm on a better shield here, by the way. You get more hit points to start in a battle like this, but I also have elite armor. This guy has, uh, his breastplate is something like, uh, I can't remember the exact stats, but it's an amazingly strong piece of army, armor. Now, some of my units got, got uh, we're still on charge. I had to call them back. Hopefully those guys aren't too exposed out there. Can hardly afford for a bunch of guys to get shot down as they're trying to retreat here. See if I have to go defend these guys. Oh no, they're right here. Okay. So the enemy now is... The number's not really increasing. They're way out there in the in the horizon. I mean, there's horse archers, but their main force is just kind of sitting there. We're still going to carry out the same strategy. We've got no reason to come out of our little foxhole yet. When we would start to consider coming out is when it was obvious that the enemy's morale was breaking. We're a charge where all of a sudden we showed the enemy uh, essentially strength, suddenly they turn into the prey, right? The, the Bannerlord morale system almost works like well, like predator and prey. You don't run from a from a black bear or brown bear because it thinks you're prey. Uh, the same thing applies in Bannerlord. You can actually make the enemy chase you by running. And conversely, if you attack the enemy very aggressively while they're sitting back, you can cause them to rout. So I'm gonna kill a few more of their horse boys here. Uh, there's another big wave coming. We're not through this yet. I hope this is the last big wave. Our guys are at this stage are probably like me. They're probably at half health or lower. They're probably riding horses like mine that have, I can't even actually see any life on this horse. Basically, if somebody breathes on this horse, it's gonna be uh, to the glue factory. Yeah, here comes another wave. Now they're not really attacking my, this flank here with the infantry very much but I also don't want to leave it open. It's kind of a hard decision at this stage. Guys still have arrows. Uh, one of the advantages in a battle like this, besides holding fire early on, uh, is that I have a lot of these guys picking up uh, extra arrows falling on the ground. Because they're horse archers, the enemy's still attacking us uh, and shooting at arrows at us. So we're gonna spread out, and I'm gonna try to take the sixth and eighth core off to the side here to flank this enemy this time. 
A lot of guys are am out of ammunition, so we have to resort to different tactics. We'll get to the side of the enemy here and then just sort of uh, push around, push into the enemy so that we get a little flanking maneuver. We're trying to turn the enemy's flanks, that military turn for it. And they're doing a decent job trying to adapt to it, but it's still worrying their formation. Their formation is like backpedaling instead of moving forward. And incidentally, that helps you in a battle like this. Uh, troops moving backwards do less damage to you than you do to them when you're moving forward. Oh, this fucking guy. Motherfucker. Racking the Jarl with your mace, dude. We'll have that guy flayed alive after this battle. All right, so now they're either reforming or routing because that's not... Uh, this, this tactic here is called uh, being a pussy. I can't tell for sure what they're doing. They're not routing because routing enemies will not defend with their shield like they're doing, uh, but they, they're, they're evidently reforming. They're gonna take these infantrymen and try to combine them with reinforcements to make the next push. So what do we do? We pursue. Our infantry's right on them. A lot of our guys are faster than their units. We grab a taxi, right? We grab the equivalent of a, a medieval Jeep here and we're gonna fly forward uh, and do a little pursuing of the enemy here, right? Attack their rear guard. Still can't tell what's going on, and I can't get my forces too strung out chasing after these guys. It sure seems like a route, though. Some of these guys sh seem like they're routing. And incidentally, the enemy, it, 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 that, that is possible. You'll get some units individually that route, while other units are holding firm. Uh, there's a morale system for each individual army group. So you'll have some groups, especially if they're getting their asses kicked particularly bad, they will flee, while others are actually advancing. Uh, and of course, this happens in real life. What I'm basically trying to do now is change their mind about reforming. Uh, if they don't reform, this battle will be over. If I can get them to retreat, but you see that right there, they start pulling their bows out. These guys still want to fight. I, I see guys shooting now. It's my job now to keep my troops as, as safe as I can while still trying to, to break their morale. If I can kill enough guys where they're just like, you know what, fuck this. I lost my other friend, that sword sister I had a crush on, that one with the big tits, she got killed. There's no more boobs now, I gotta, I gotta find some other woman to hit on. Like these guys, their morale is starting to break, right? I mean, don't laugh. I mean, if there was a, a gal with big boobs that you were hitting on that got cut down by a horse rider, you would be upset, right? You, you would run from the battlefield. That's, they're just being logical, folks. Kill a few more guys here. My health is pretty tenuous at this stage. I'll have to kill some of these horse archers. They're, they're not going away yet though, so I might start having to reform my troops out in the open for a final push here. The truth of it is, is that if these troops used good strategy, they would actually have a chance to defeat us at this stage. If they turned, spread, got their archers in a big arch, brought infantry reinforcements up and attacked us immediately. Uh, they would actually, if this was an, an, an intelligent, uh, uh, artificial intelligent, I know that's a, like an oxymoron these days, uh, but if this is chat GPT, they might be able to pull some kind of feigned retreat, badass ambush trap maneuver here. Uh, instead, you know, the AI with Banner Lord, it just kind of looks like it's wavering. It's, it's waffling worse than, well, I won't say who. W waffling worse than some presidents we've had in the past. I'm going to set up my units here just in case they have one more press against us. But I think this battle's over. Yeah, I hear my troops yelling victory. So there we there we have it. Um, turns out you can use a Shiltron against Genghis Khan. You just need to have them uh, use stupid tactics. You know, sort of charge your defensive position and you need some wonderful pieces of granite to protect your units. Uh, not to mention you need to have incredibly overpowered uh, companions like I have, right? I have a few that are in the level 15 to 20 area, but a lot of my family members and companions are level 40 folks. These, these troops are elite. And of course we have Batanian Fiend Champs and Banner Knights and, and the rest of the army is also elite as well. So a very decisive victory. We still have, incredibly, we have 167 troops left. Uh, we had 13 killed. That's pretty amazing, considering they had, you know, 2,000, 2,100 troops. Um, but here's another example where a very small compacted force using combined concentrated firepower, a couple different uh, unique tactics, can destroy a much larger force.
In fact, this is probably what happened to Genghis Khan, right? He, he probably eventually ran up against a very strong tactical leader. Uh, no, of course, I'm joking, folks. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, we'll do a few more historic analogs like this, and I'll talk to you friends next time. Thank you.